I am Philip Lira. Uh, I am a graphics programmer at Unity. And I'm Andre McGraw, and I uh, am a graphics test engineer at Unity. And today we are going to go through uh, getting started with lightweight render pipeline. Um, today we're going to go through, uh, first show you a demo of what we've kind of been working on to, to test out and you know, refine the feature. And then we'll start diving into how you can get it, uh, how you like, get started with a basic scene with it. And then also start diving into some of uh, the differences compared to legacy uh, or the standard built-in pipeline. Um, and then at the end, we'll show you uh, what's, what's to come down the road. Um, so first, I'll just show you uh, this little video we've put together. pipeline and it's all running um, through it using the new system. This runs on uh, mobile devices. Uh, we're currently hitting iPhone 6s at uh, that pure smooth 30 FPS and we're almost reaching 60 FPS. Um, we're just a bit shy in a few scenes. But this makes use of some of the new features and uh, it's, it's, it's shown us really what we need to try and create with uh, these new rendering pipelines. Uh, everything in here is an actual demo as well, like nothing's been pre-recorded or anything. It's, uh, as you can see, all real-time lighting, there's nothing baked. Uh, all the AI in the boats is actually AI, figuring out how to go around the level. Uh, the physics is actual buoyancy physics getting calculated. Um, essentially, you can even jump in and play the game and run around in it, so... kind of gave us a good representation of what we could achieve if someone was to jump in and make a game with this render pipeline. Yeah. Uh -oh. YouTube's not letting me go out of full screen. Ignore. Um, this was also an image created with Lightweight Render Pipeline, um, part of another uh, demo, in-house demo that we had been working on. Um, they worked a lot more with character rendering, so they started playing around with uh, a, light, a light version of the subsurface scattering that you get in HD Render Pipeline. And uh, they started doing some really cool stuff, so some of that is probably going to get implemented in the future into Lightweight. Uh, here's the scene. Here's a scene that... Uh, kind of shows off, we wanted to test with the neon, neon scene of how it kind of got upgraded and how similar, similar it looked to the standard built-in render pipeline. Uh, and again here, uh, another scene was made originally in standard, lightweight, I mean, standard render pipeline and then was upgraded to the lightweight render pipeline. So what actually is Lightweight Render Pipeline? Um, now Lightweight Render Pipeline is a scriptable render pipeline. And a scriptable render pipeline is essentially our new kind of fully open API for C Sharp. Um, so you can, you can write, in it, write it with C Sharp, you can look at it, all, the, all the files and go into them and see how it's all put together, how the rendering actually you know, is made and um, constructed. So you can go in there and edit it if you want, you can, you can learn from it. Um, so it's kind of open, it's no longer a black box Unity's rendering, so it's, it's really nice to be able to understand how it's doing things and to be able to edit those. Um, so Lightweight is one of two in-house render pipelines we are currently developing, the other one being HD Render Pipeline, which is uh, kind of aimed at the AAA games and high-end console, high-end PC. 
Um, as, as many of you seen, like the book of the dead demo, which looks like gorgeous. Um, that was done with that. And at the same time, we need to create something that's a bit more lighter and that will work on mobile devices. So that was the aim of lightweight render pipeline, because uh, designed up like from the ground up with mobile in mind, and also careful uh, thought about making sure uh, legacy APIs such as OpenGL ES2 are still supported and still work, and you can still get performance gains there. Um, so what does that mean, essentially? Uh, it's in the name, lightweight, it's more performant, it's faster, you will get faster rendering out of it, um, just simply because of the way it does all the shader backend and how it does lighting calculations, how it's actually organizing camera data and sending it, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, we're doing very smart things in shaders, uh, depending on what hardware you're on, and skipping some things we might not have to worry about. Um, it's, yeah, as I said before, it's completely customizable because it's open, it's just in the C-sharp. It's nothing's hidden away behind our source code. Um, so you can go in there and plug away at it. And that means you can add anything. So if you're making a game and you're like, okay, lightweight's kind of good, but we need to, we need tune outlines. So it's that. You just go, go into the pipeline and throw in a tune pass at the end like to just fully render everything. And that'll be part of the core pipeline. And that's designed for rendering X style. Um, so what can you do with it? With, with the gains of it being faster, you can do bigger games because you can have more going on. You're not spending so much time on the actual rendering costs. Uh, you can do prettier games, so keep your games the same size, have them kind of small, but then you can just make them look a lot nicer because you've got that extra headroom to then either, either expand or uh, be comfortable with your game running super fast on old hardware. Uh, more immersive XR experiences just comes with the fact that it's cheaper to render. So rendering two screens, you're, you, you're going to have a much better time doing that. And what I really liked and I found uh, while testing it was you learn stuff that only graphics programmers learn. Because it's there, you can see it, you can start playing with it, you can start writing like little bits of code and seeing how it affects the rendering of screens. So how do you get it? Uh, this is probably the first and easiest way. Um, also using the Unity Hub. If you haven't used it before, I suggest checking it out because it's pretty good. Uh, but if you make a new project, you'll see a template dropdown. And normally we had, we've had we always had 2D and 3D, but now we've got some additions. Uh, 3D with extras is just not the same as 3D, but we've got some assets in there, posters there. Uh, then we've got some AR ones that are set up ready for AR experiences. And then we've got the pipeline, the render pipeline ones. So we've got HD render pipeline, lightweight render pipeline, and VR lightweight render pipeline. So the two lightweight uh, render pipeline ones are actually essentially the same pipeline. There's nothing different there. There's just some settings that have been set to make it more performant for VR. And uh, the scene set up with the multiple cameras and some interactive stuff so you can get going straight away. Uh, another way to do it is just through the normal Unity launcher. Uh, it looks pretty much the same, so uh, let's make a new one. And jump template, lightweight render pipeline. And once you've loaded that up, you'll be presented with a scene that kind of looks like this. And this is a little demo scene with some assets. Uh, the paint bucket can on the floor has got a shader graph shader set up on it and just little things like that. And some, some preset settings of low, medium, high like quality assets to get you started with the idea of how to use a render pipeline. Another way to get is the package manager. Um, this can be found in the window menu and then package manager. And this is essentially our new kind of delivery platform for uh, currently a lot of preview um, stuff because we can ship it outside of the release of Unity so we don't have to wait for a new beta to come out to, to, to push some fixes into it. Um, and, and that gives us very rapid turnaround for package versions, which is great. But if you uh, select all, you'll be, you'll, you'll be presented with a big list of all the packages that are, that are available. Uh, you'll see lightweight render pipeline. If you select that, then you want to go to the version dropdown. And this is where, if you're using 18.1, you want to go with version uh, 1.xx, whatever. And if you're using 18.2, you'll want to go with 2.xx. Um, and that's just compatibility sakes. And then once you click install, it'll come in. Third way, which I really like, uh, enjoy mainly because I'm always uh, checking out the latest uh, things that are always getting added to it. And this is also. Um, available to anyone because the Git repository is a public repository. Anyone can see the latest things that we're pushing into it. Um, this, for example, is the pulled down version of the scriptable render pipeline GitHub repository. Um, and this you'll see here, uh, 
four or five folders with com.unity. These are essentially package folders. This is where the packages get created, essentially. So you can, you can then use these. So once you've pulled this down, you've got your project, uh, Unity project kind of uh, opened up and loaded. If you go to your project and go packages folder, inside there you'll find a manifest.json. If you load that up, you'll see a big list of all the packages that are currently imported into your project. Uh, here you'll see I've already got lightweight render pipeline uh, pulled in, and this was because I had done it through uh, a template or the packages manager. Uh, if you if you haven't haven't already gotten it, then it wouldn't be here. But what, we, what you essentially want to do is add four lines. And these four lines. So we've got the package names at the start. Um, you can see render pipeline is lightweight in there. That's actually lightweight, and then the other three are dependencies. So with any render pipeline, you need the core as well, and that's just the core shader library and some functions. Uh, Post-processing is also required and shader graph. And then you can just do a file pointer instead of a version. And this means it'll look there on your computer at that point. And it also supports relative uh, directories. So then you can have that just your GitHub repo pulling down from the Unity uh, SRP and then it will always get updated. You can, you can work at whatever pace, you can go back commits. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty good cool to check out the latest greatest. So now I'm going to do a very brief demo of how to like get going once you've got the lightweight render pipeline um, built in. So in this project, it's already been pulled. And down here on the side, we can see packages. And if we open that up, you'll see a list of the packages that are already built into Unity. And you'll also see I have brought in lightweight render pipeline. Um, so that's, that's interesting if you want to go in there and you know, see the actual files in Unity, you can load them up into uh, your, your favorite code editing program and go and edit it. But here I'm just going to show you how to, you know, once you've pulled it down, you'll be like, well, am I using it? Am I not using it? So right now we're in uh, essentially the legacy render pipeline. And here we've got a Sphere. A sphere is using standard material, so we're in legacy pipeline. One of the first things you want to do is go assets. Um, oh no, actually, we'll do it here down here. How do you right click on this thing? There we go. And we want to create rendering lightweight pipeline asset. And essentially this is a little file that holds settings for the render pipeline. Um, you'll see a few here. Uh, you can set these for quality settings and et cetera. We'll go over into more detail about this later. But now that we've got the lightweight asset, we can now go, very importantly, we must go into project settings, graphics. And up the top here, you'll notice there's script oriented pipeline settings and a little like a, yeah, a place to throw it in there. So now if we chuck this in here, we have now rendering lightweight render pipeline. So you'll notice the sphere's gone pink and that's simply because the sphere is still using a standard uh, shader from legacy pipeline. And because of the lighting differences and how the render pipeline actually works, it can't render that, that shader. That shader has nothing to do with lightweight render pipeline. So I'm just going to make a new material down here. Right click. Uh, and we'll create a new material. And we'll throw this. So now any new materials you create are automatically using a lightweight standard shader. Um, also now if I go up here and go create new sphere, we also get a sphere with a render, lightweight render pipeline compatible shader on it. Uh, one quick thing I'll just briefly show, because uh, it's pretty cool, is the shader graph. This, I'll, ju I'll just go into the basics of how to make one. So if we go create, we'll go shader. You'll see here we've got some graphs. Uh, PBR, PBR graph, subgraph is a graph that you can embed, and unlit graph is for unlit shaders. So we'll just quickly make a PBR graph, call that new shader graph, open that, and it will compile, just dump that here. And so here you will see we have a master node, zoom in that, and I'll just make the worst shader in the world, find some color, plug the color in, change the color, save the asset. And now if we select this uh, material, we can change it to the new shader graph. And now we've got a red sphere. Ta-da! 
Um, but yeah, that's the basics of uh, how, to, how to actually get yourself going with Lightweight once you've got it in your project. All right, so as Andre mentioned, we have this pipeline asset, and the pipeline asset uh, drives the lightweight pipeline in terms of data. The lightweight pipeline is a data-driven pipeline, and you're going to see that you have some settings and you have some capabilities. And these capabilities, uh, well, first, the, you can create multiple assets to control quality, so you can... Uh, uh, build to different platforms with different assets or even change that at runtime. Uh, and the capabilities there are basically a contract between the developer and the pipeline because we want to be able to provide you with a very lean build and strip everything that you don't need. So for instance, if you're working on a mobile game and you don't, you don't care about local shadows, or shadows for local lights, and I'm gonna explain what, what are local lights uh, later down. Then you can just disable local shadows. Uh, we're gonna remove the uh, shaded variance from that, and that means you're gonna get a faster build times and less memory. And that also means that, so for instance, in the camera, you control some rendering data, and if you have things uh, in the camera, like HDR on, but you don't have it in the pipeline, that means uh, HDR won't be rendered. And then we show you uh, a warning saying that the pipeline uh, doesn't uh, have this enabled. So basically the pipeline asset controls what the pipe, think of it of what the pipeline can do. And the camera, or what you have in the camera, or what you have in the light, it's, it, it's controllable by the pipeline asset. And we are also uh, exposing additional camera data uh, for you. So for instance, currently we expose new, uh, some new parameters like uh, rendering shadows or rendering a depth texture or this new uh, color texture that we're gonna talk later on. And eventually we will grow this additional camera data with more things. Um, but these allow, for instance, in the boat demo, none of the effects cameras, they render shadows. And this is how we control it. Regarding shaders, um, None of the lead shaders work with Lightweight Pipeline, and that basically is because we provide a new shading framework. Uh, and we also provide a new set of standard shaders. Uh, you can find them under the Lightweight Pipeline category in the dropdown. And we provide a lead physically based, and that basically is uh, within, the sing, uh, within the same shader, you have the metallic and specular workflow. We provide a lead a simple lighting, that is basically a blink form, and this basically replaces all of the uh, legacy and mobile shaders that we had in built-in before. And we provide a lit and lit. That basically means that there's no dynamic lights computed in this shader, but you still get GI, so you get the either light probes or light maps with it. And for particles, we provide physically based, simple lighting and lit particles. And for terrain, uh, it's a work in progress. Currently, we have uh, the base terrain and grass, but no, no trees spotted uh, yet to lightweight pipeline. And all of the Unity unlit shaders, they work out of the box with lightweight pipeline. We also provide a mature upgrader that if you have a project and you want to quickly upgrade to lightweight pipeline, you can uh, do it. Uh, so currently, we, we only convert the built-in uh, built-in Unity shaders. If you have some custom shaders, you have to upgrade them manually. And what the upgrader does is basically sorts out the material surfaces differences between built-in and lightweight pipeline and takes handle of that and upgrade, upgrade your materials. You can also, so that is uh, exposed in the edit, edit menu. And if you go down to render pipeline, you have options to upgrade the project materials or to upgrade selected materials. Um, these standard shaders, they are very flexible, but they grow very fast with the many variants. And that means it's especially, uh, variant explosion is especially bad with mobile because when you build, it builds uh, combinations for all APIs. And for GLES, we store the shaders in text format and that consumes memory. So basically in 18.2, we provide a way to strip, uh, to strip shader variants uh, on C-sharp side. So basically, 
in, at the build stage, you can say you can strip multi-compile variants. And the lightweight pipeline uses that to strip invalid combinations. Uh, and for instance, the, the lightweight pipeline doesn't support dynamic GI, so we don't care about real-time light, light maps. And then if you have a light map on, if you have a di directional light map keyword without a light map on, that means it's basically an invalid combination. Or we strip unused uh, shaders and passes. For instance, if you select in the pi pipeline asset that you don't care about uh, real-time shadows, then we don't have to put the, all of the shadow caster pass, passes in the build. And we strip the meta passes and so on. And basically, the, the pipeline capabilities that you select, we also strip those. Um, I'll talk about some implementation details of uh, Lightweight Pipeline, but before, I'd like to show some numbers on how it compares with built-in pipeline. And <coughs> this is a benchmark scene. Uh, it has around 1K uh, uh, renders uh, with different materials and multiple lights. And first, there's this test on iPhone 6S, and these are CPU and GPU timings. And <clears throat> this is the max uh, time in milliseconds. And in lightweight pipeline, uh, you can see you, you have better timings on this. And this thing has one directional light plus four point lights shading all objects. And here's a comparison with more devices, and this these numbers here, they are, they are the average frame time in milliseconds. So we, we basically build average 20 seconds of, uh, of frame time, and we get these numbers. And you can also see that we have um, a fairly good uh, comparison regarding light weight here. This is a test with one directional light only. And the idea here for lightweight pipeline is to uh, provide a very fast path for a single directional light, which is the most uh, uh, most common scenario in mobile. And here is the same scene and same setup with uh, additional four pixel lights. And you can see that uh, in the Galaxy S5, uh, we're doing uh, worse at the moment. Uh, optimization for lightweight is still in progress. Uh, but what is happening here is that the, because we shade lights in single pass, uh, that means we have branching and indexing, branching on uniform only, and indexing on the local lights. And on the low-end devices, depending on your scene, it might, be, uh, it might be very costly to do that. So <clears throat> we're working on to get some um, to fix this. Here's another scene. Uh, it's a modified nightmare scene with a few uh, real-time lights as well. And this scene was tested in VR. And it was tested on Oculus Go. And on Oculus Go, we had uh, a script to go to, to unlock the, the sync. And we got 72 FPS on lightweight pipeline uh, compared to 47 to Unity standard. So that's it for now. And so talking about optimization, these are, if you work on optimization in mobile, you probably hit, hit some of these bottlenecks. So basically draw calls, um, you're driver bound due to the cost of uh, setting up each draw call and the amount of draw calls you submit to GPU. And this is uh, especially a problem in mobile VR. Or you are fill rate bound, that means the amount of fragments you can shade and output. And this uh, depends on your uh, scene target or on your actual device tar uh, target size and the amount of overdraw you have in the scene um, and bandwidth. So bandwidth is related to the amount of, uh, of data that you write and load to tiles uh, in the mobile uh, GPU. So Lightweight Pipeline attacks these problems by providing a, a new batcher uh, a new shading framework and a new renderer. That's uh, mostly all of the code is on C Sharp. And throughout the presentation, I'm going to talk about these three uh, systems that Lightweight has. So first, for the batcher, I want to give some quick overview of how Unity built-in pipeline batcher works. And basically, we batch per material. 
So even if you have a uh, same shader, uh, when preparing the work for the raw call, we have a specific material with a specific shader, and we build a constant buffer, and we upload this constant buffer, and then issue a draw command. And that happens uh, for every material. And the way to go around this and to alleviate this problem is to create the material property blocks, and so we don't create this constant buffer every frame or every, or every call. And the first thing we did with the SRP batcher is that we cache, we build once and cache the constant buffer for that material. And that lives across many frames. <clears throat> that allows us to, because now we have the cached, so we group all of the materials with the same shader. And by same shader, I mean this exactly same variant as well. And we copy all of the common buffers that are already built into this linear uh, buffer array. And we upload just once for all of this ma those materials to the GPU. And we should draw a call with a buffer offset. This new batcher, it, wor it doesn't work on GLES, but uh, on mobile you get it to work on Metal and Vulkan. Um, some, uh, some shader uh, setup is required. If you're using lightweight pipeline, the built-in shaders uh, they're already ready for this, so you don't have to do anything. If you create a custom shaders for lightweight pipeline, that means that you have to put all of your material constants inside a common buff a constant buffer that is called unity per material. And that also means that if you create a custom shader, we don't provide these, um, the declaration of these properties in the shader core, right? So you have to declare them yourself. So don't expect for things like main text and the line ST to be available when you create the uh, custom shader. So in summary, the uh, new batcher, it, it attacks uh, the problem of draw calls by reducing the draw call cost and attacks the <coughs> workflow by uh, not requiring you to worry about much of your property blocks. And I'll talk about the shading framework, but before, I'd like to just give a general uh, view on terms of uh, how mobile GPUs work with, uh, in terms of features. So for on the low-end devices, uh, they don't support compute, and they have very expensive branching indexing. And on the high end, you have compute and indexing. It's fairly OK. And as long as you have un branching on uniform and the branching doesn't, well, or even uniform or doesn't diverge, it's, it should be acceptable. And the built-in pipeline here, uh, and we're talking about the forward render, uh, the way it does is it shades the, direct, the brightest direction light plus GI and vertex light in the same pass. And for each additional light, it performs additional uh, pass uh, and that basically means you have more draw calls and you have increased overdraw and you have also increased bandwidth to, <coughs> to load uh, from the tile and write to it. But there's no branching and no indexing. The Lightway pipeline, um, we provide a new shader library. Uh, we set the constant buffers re uh, regarding their access frequency. So basically we set the light constants once uh, per camera and the goal here is to provide a very fast path. So we shade light in batches, so we don't pay the cost of the additional passes. But still, we provide a very fast path for a single directional light. That's the main use case. And we scale the rendering between different platforms, so we do differently shading between them. And we do branching and indexing, but that depends on the light type and the platform. So I want to introduce you the concept in the pipeline of global light and local light. And the reason for this is that um, shading a directional light is different from shading a point light. And we don't want to, uh, in the fragment shader, to branch on this. So we consider all directional lights as globals, and they have a separate set of constants that we don't we don't shade them in the loop, and we don't, don't do any branching or indexing. As for local lights, um, we call them per object, and we, do, uh, we compute distance and angle attenuation in the fragment shader. 
and we do branch on uniform only. Uh, and the indexing depends if you if the platform that you're targeting supports structure buffer or not. So in summary, uh, we shade one directional light plus k local lights on a single pass, pass plus g i and vertex lights. And k it depends on your platform. If you if the platform supports structure buffer then K is defined by the pipeline asset. Uh, if it doesn't, then uh, we clamp it to four. Um, the reason is to avoid indexing all those platforms. And we shade each additional directional light in additional pass. This is not in 18.2 yet, uh, we're working on this. But uh, the cost shouldn't be much high here because uh, they are global anyway. So we have to shade all objects. And hopefully everyone can see here. So because um, we have different constants for different light types, we provide you this light struct. This is actually provided in the core. And we provide a get main light function that fills this light struct with everything that you need to shade. So you don't have to work with lightweight pipeline. You don't have to deal with constants. Uh, we have an abstraction in a struct that works for you. And if you look down, we also have a get light inside that for loop. And that get light accepts a light index. And that basically sorts out the uh, per object light index and fills the light for you. And so basically, um, we set a big global buffer with all lights. And we set the per object light indices. And then when you pass the index in, in the loop, it knows which light in this global buffer refers to this object. And then we provide global illumination functions and lighting physically based is just uh, a function to compute the direct contribution for that light. And it takes the light struct and that's, and it computes fog, but it's not here. And that's it. For shadows, we have the same uh, strategy here. So we have, uh, we render to a directional shadow map and we have a render to a local shadow map atlas. So basically, the idea is to get a dedicated shadow map for directional lights that we compute everything, uh, a shadow code on vertex. And we have a dedicated set of constants with no branching and no indexing. And we still do a screen space uh, resolve, but only if you have cascades. So if you don't have cascades, you will not pay the cost of uh, dev prepass here. And for local uh, shadows, uh, we do indexing. <coughs> And the shadow code is computed on pixel, and we render all local lights into the same uh, shadow atlas. In Lightweight Pipeline, we don't support transparent objects casting shadows. We do support only alpha cutouts. And regarding filtering, currently it's fixed. So you have four taps blocky filtering on mobile. And on no mobile, you have 5x5 10 filtering, which gives much better results. But the strategy here is to expose in the pipeline asset for you to configure the shadow algorithm that you want, regardless of the platform. So basically, the shading uh, framework, it tries to attack the problem by reducing overdraw, draw calls, and the bandwidth. And the cost of indexing and branching varies per, pl per platform. So if you have a very, very, very basic scene, then it might be um, actually better to shade in separate passes. But the strategy here is that you can customize the pipeline to do that very easily if you want to. Talking about the renderer, so the built-in pipeline, it is a black box. You don't have access to the source code. It does a lot of things imp implicitly, and you can customize it. And the development cycle for us to release optimizations and updates to it, it takes longer because it has to go through the, all of the QA process in Unity and it, it has to be released with Unity. And for the lightweight pipeline, the majority of code is on c -sharp, So you can actually take a look at it and you can see what's happening. It's very explicit. Um, you can try to fiddle with it to, to, to work to your needs. If you have uh, graphics uh, programmers in your team, they will probably customize it to what you want. And we make it modular, so it's easy for you to customize it. And the pipeline is data-driven. And that means that early on the frame, we, we set all of the, um, we configure in a struct 
all data that the render needs. So basically we take data from camera, from the visible lights in the pipeline asset and build this data and pass to a renderer and that's it. And we provide, with that you get a faster development cycles. So we have uh, more frequent releases on that and the pipeline can be updated without updating Unity. So you can like under show, you can just go to the package manager and get a new pipeline version. This is a high level a description, very high level description of the pipeline. And we provide two new uh, callbacks, which are begin frame rendering and begin in one call be before each camera, be begin camera rendering. So we basically set the constants uh, per frame, uh, per camera. We build this uh, camera data and lighting data based on call results. We pass all of the data to the pipeline. From this point, the data is read only. So the pipeline doesn't care about the platform, the, the renderer, I'm sorry. So we pass the data to the renderer and the renderer doesn't care about what platform you are or doesn't care about anything. It only cares about the that data that you feed it in. And with that data, it, um, it sorts out what it has to do and renders the frame. So uh, we are providing a forward renderer now. Uh, we're gonna work on a deferred renderer uh, later. And basically the, this renderer, uh, we want it to make in a way that's pluggable. So you, can, you could also create your own renderer and plug into the lightweight pipeline and don't have to worry about all of the uh, boilerplate code that the pipeline does. So basically it has three stages. Um, so you create the passes um, and it, it caches some rendering data. And the setup phase set up per object light indices. And it basically figures, figures out the dependencies on the pipeline. And in Kiwi, all of the passes needed and requested based on what, you, what the camera wants. And we have to think about tile utilization here because uh, we don't want to be like render shadow map and render game and render another off-screen camera render game. And we don't do a dev prepass unless you have cascade shadows or if the platform doesn't support to resolve multi-sample depth. And it just executes and EQ the passes and perform an additional uh, editor camera rendering later on. And that's it. So now I'll switch back to Andra. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to go over a little bit of some of the implementation and uses of lightweight render pipeline in the demo you saw a uh, video of earlier. Um, so uh, overview of it. Um, when I was a very small kid, I played a lot of Speedbird Tech from 1997. It was fun. And it was one of the only games I had on my PC at the time. Um, and at some point, when I knew how to do some Unity stuff, I was like, ah, oh, it'd be really fun to make that kind of thing. Um, so like all good Unity projects, you start something and then it's another project that sits on your hard drive and it doesn't go anywhere for years. Uh, and I decided to kind of resurrect it for testing lightweight render pipeline. I thought it would work well and it would be nice doing a mobile game that looked like a nice tropical island essentially. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, a kind of a use case of what you do normally when testing is check if a slider goes up and down. Um, this obviously misses a lot of things when you're just checking if buttons do things. So having a decent demo project that was actually relative to something that someone would make with the tool. Uh, helped tremendously. Uh, and the aim was to try and get it at 60, I mean 30 FPS on iPhone 6. And we're almost there on iPhone 6. Uh, success, we're easily there, verging on uh, 60 FPS, which is cool. Um, the general setup is open levels, large drawing distances, wanted to be able to see a long way. Uh, tracks, wanted essentially the tracks of the game to be able to be big. Um, lots of water on screen. So the water rendering had to be fairly optimized uh, and quick and kind of the pipeline needed to help with the things that you might want to do as if you were making shaders in a game. Um, varying lighting conditions was also one. Uh, if you ever play a racing game, you've always got like a night version of the track or a day version or dawn or dusk, or whatever. Um, being able to also change it throughout a race would be quite interesting. And, uh, so we went down with, it needed to be real time. So nothing was baked. Uh, there was a bit of AO baked into it, but aside from that, uh, everything was real time. Uh, and the buoyancy, obviously everything's on water, the boat's on water, 
you got lots of little props around the place that are also on the water. Um, not specifically something that uh, Lightweight Render Pipeline directly helped with, but because the rendering was cheaper, that meant we could spend more CPU time on doing something like more advanced physics. Um, so now I'm just going to walk through some bits about how the water rendering was actually done. Yeah. So it's based off uh, Gerstner waves, and it's essentially just a bunch of sine, sine waves, but they work really well. So it was nice, it was cheap, and it could be done on mobile. Um, inspiration uh, for, the, for the actual rendering, like the coloring and surfacing of the water, came from Hitman. And uh, they had some cool things about uh, using lookup textures for uh, doing the coloring. So here um, we've got a shot. It's because there's the camera depth texture that the lightweight render pipeline creates. So I've got the depth for underneath the water because the water itself doesn't render the depth. And then it's just using two gradients uh, to map map to the depth, and then it produced really good uh, results and was cheap. Uh, it was also world space reconstruction of uh, for for caustic mapping. So rather than having every shader like the rocks and the boats and the boys and all that be able to have caustics once they reach under the water, uh, it was much easier to go. Well, everything under the water is going to get caustics, so why not render the caustics with the water and render it as part of that? Um, so here it's using the depth. It's doing a reverse back into world space uh, uh, coordinates, and then from that it maps over a caustic texture. That's just a sequence, a texture 2D array. Um, it needed its own shading, because obviously a basic PBR doesn't really pull off all of this. So um, this is where I started diving into Lightweight Render Pipeline shaders. And this was the great thing I liked about Lightweight Render Pipeline, is that you can just go, oh, let's have a look at this. And let's load up this shader. wonder how they do the code for that. Because I come from very much more of an artist background, so some of this code just phew. Um, but yeah, I again jumped in, stole uh, the specular part of the PBR shader to get the nice highlight on the water. And it was there. It's literally a copy and paste. It seems why it's got all the, the comments as well. Um, and I also had to access a uh, light space shadow map. Because at uh, a point, we had screen space shadows in Lightweight Render Pipeline which meant it used the depth of the scene uh, to then render the shadows onto things. Um, because we don't support shadows with transparencies, and transparencies don't end up in depth most of the time, uh, I needed to sample the shadow map directly to be able to project the shadow on top of the water. So here you can see I get the shadow coordinates. Um, it's one function in the lightweight render pipeline uh, shader library. And then I also sample it with the attenuation. And that's another function. It was super simple. Uh, the reflections. So this uses planar reflections, and this is a this was a kind of a custom implementation. Uh, but it's, essentially, it's just another render, rendering the scene again upside down, like uh, a reflected camera. And here it's it's rendered at a lower resolution. And this is where things like the camera uh, additional data uh, that we've added comes into it's like being super useful, because we can turn off shadows because you don't really notice shadows missing on the reflection. We can also tell it not to worry about doing depth and not worry about doing uh, a camera opaque texture because we're not we're not rendering the water which needs that pass in the reflection. So little little optimizations that we can easily do just by doing tick boxes. Um, so for the new and improved grab pass, which is essentially our opaque texture. Uh, the reason we've called it an opaque texture is because it only captures what's in the opaque bars. It doesn't get any of the stuff that's in the transparency bars. And we've made this decision mainly because we, you think about what uh, a grab pass would be used for most of the time, and that would be uh, heat waves or water uh, refractions or blurred reflections through glass or any of these things. And that they all have the thing in common that is transparency. So we're like, we can save lots of time by just going, it's only the opaque objects. This also means it's, we can also always generate it at that one point, and we only generate it once. As grab pass, if you used it in multiple shaders that were rendered at multiple parts throughout the queue, you'd end up with lots of grab passes, which means you end up rendering the scene again each time and holding the memory for that as well. So it was terrible. Um, this is much more efficient, and here you can see there's the top one's the tick box on the render pipeline asset, and you've got a little down sampling option to lower res if you want. 
the second one is a shot showing the button on the camera to add additional data. And that makes the script appear on the camera below it, which then, because I only needed the color texture for the main camera, I just ticked it there. And that means it didn't get generated anywhere else. It wasn't like extra additional stuff on every camera because in this, this project's got three separate cameras and generating that for every single one of them and doing shadows it was just ridiculous. So it's nice having this kind of control, e easy control over it. Um, so speaking of three cameras, this is another camera. This is the uh, effects camera, essentially. Um, and in here you can kind of see, I think the next one's better. Nope, that's more of the, yeah, showing off the grab pass replacement uh, being used to do refractions under the water. But the effects camera helps to render dynamic foam. So the boats, as they race around, they drop some trails, uh, just trail renderers. And uh, then that's, that's getting rendered by this effects camera. And it's on a layer, so it only gets rendered by that. This then gets saved into a, a render texture, which then can be used. And this is also doing the displacement of the water. And that pass looks something like this, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but you'll see the red kind of colors, uh, the foam mask. Uh, green and here, blue, uh, yeah, green and blue, uh, the uh, normals, R and uh, G, because we don't, uh, it's generally water's always on a flat plane, so I can just get rid of one channel, not needed. Uh, and the alpha is actually the height. So you can't see the alpha in this shot, but it's used to actually push the vertices up to give it a bit of a wake. So ignore that bottom one, I didn't re reorganize the channels properly. Uh, another custom uh, shader that was needed was some vegetation because uh, there was going to be, uh, it's a tropical island, you've got to have nice palm trees blowing in the wind and stuff. So um, I started working on that. And the, the thing with this is it, it wasn't that much different from a normal PBR shader. I didn't need too much more apart from some vertex offsets. So in this, this way, I used all the functions from Lightweight Render Pipeline. Uh, so here you can see uh, that was broken down before earlier with a full kind of like code sort of a how that works internally. That's the lightweight fragment PBR. And you feed it the data. So you feed it some input data that has information about the surface that you're rendering. Then it has like uh, surface data, which is albedo, uh, your like specular, metallic, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then it just spits out a PBR value, which is really handy. Um, I added also V-Face support so I could shade the other side of the leaf with a bit of fake, really cheap subsurface. And here, as you can see, the vertex colors. This is used for the procedural animation. Uh, and this is straight from Crisis, essentially. They got a good article on GPU Gems uh, 3. And it breaks down. It's just using the different vertex channels to offset the vertices. Um, and it's a really good little little bit of information, but this is how it's laid out. I've got all, all, all the colors combined, then we've got RGBA. Uh, a I used as an occlusion, so I didn't have to have another texture map for it. So um, I added a dither crossfade, and um, I made some billboarded versions in like an hour, so they're not the best. But, um, this was surprisingly simple. Um, it turned out it was that line of code I needed to add, and that was it, and that was great. So this is part of, this function comes from the core SRP, so that's the package that we saw earlier. It's also what the script or render pipelines are built on top of. It's a base shader library that's got a whole heap of helper functions and like, uh, yeah, just real good shortcuts for if you want to get into writing your own shaders. And you can almost make it in shader graph now, this, this vegetation uh, shader. Uh, we've, we, we got vertex offset in it and we got V face support as well. The only thing that's missing right now is instance properties, but it's on the roadmap, so I'm really looking forward to that. Because then I can switch this over and uh, hands off. Don't have to keep writing some shaders there. <laughs> and now I'll pass back to Felipe for the roadmap. All right, so this is a preliminary roadmap, and for 18.2, we are releasing Lightweight Pipeline with uh, the things we talked on this uh, presentation. Uh, for 18.3, we want to bring pluggable renderers, so you can specialize your own renderer and plug into the Lightweight Pipeline, and it should work fairly nice. Uh, we want to bring point light shadows support, because that was not a priority back in, but uh, we want to, to support it. 
And um, at the end of the 18.3, we're gonna work to stabilize C# -sharp and uh, Shade API, so we don't break, uh, we don't have any breaking changes uh, from this point on. And for 19 uh, text string, uh, we plan to add a mobile deferred renderer, uh, scale the pipeline uh, quality up, and have some more debug windows, uh, some somewhat similar to what the HD has, and revisit some open problems. So in summary, um, with Lightway Pipeline, we want to enable your success, and we're solving some hard problems with it, and that basically is we're, we're providing you a modern pipeline that's highly configurable and it still supports a broad range of platforms. Uh, we want it to be very performant and we're providing some new systems that should help with that. Optimization is uh, continuous work, so we, we're, we're nonstop on um, optim optimizing this. And of course, by exposing everything in C-sharp, we want to also uh, make it very explicit for you. We want to, to you to learn how the pipeline uh, works and what it does, and make it very easy for you to extend it or customize it to your own needs. So that's it, guys. And uh, if you have questions, uh, we'd uh, love to take them. Right, so if you have questions, we have two microphones that you can just go in and ask, yeah? Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I have two short questions. One is you mentioned vertex offset in shader graph, and last time I checked, it wasn't in there, so you said it's in there now? Uh, yes. So it is? Nice. Yep, it's in 18.2. It's in you, ah. uh, you have to use the beta ah, right. and get a package through there. Okay, great. Yep. Get one of the packages there, uh, 2.xx. Two, two I see, yep. thanks. And then on your summary slide, you said on the roadmap for 2018.2 was uh, VR support. So could you dive into what you mean with that? What kind of VR stuff can we expect? Yeah, sure. So, um, so you should, it should, it's working uh, with PC VR and we're just fixing the last bits of mobile VR as well. So we've, we've got it working uh, on Oculus Go and some uh, other platforms, but we still have some minor issues that are fixing it. So for 18.2 release, it should be working on PC and mobile VR platforms. I see, thanks. Uh, hey guys. Uh, question regarding 2D, because you have the HD pipeline and lightweight pipeline, they're both targeting mostly 3D content uh, with fairly rich feature bases. Uh, are you thinking maybe of providing a sample pipeline that would be targeted for 2D game developers? Because there's quite a lot of that happening with Unity right now. So um, for the 2D, uh, I don't know about the official roadmap for 2D team, but uh, you should have some uh, something related to pipeline, uh, render pipeline soon. Uh, we do provide a basic render pipeline uh, that you can take a look on uh, and uh, use for educational purposes. But I, I think there's a solution for HD up for 2D coming. Okay, cool. Uh, and the uh, base one that you mentioned, is it on GitHub as well? We're working on the docs, uh, and we're going to release them, I think, in a... Do you know? Is it a specific uh, doc page? Um, I think to get to it, but there is, there is that separate SRP repo. A specific site, right? That has so, the old one. Yeah. So I think it's coming to GitHub, and we'll later have some specific sites. Cool, thank you. How does the memory footprint uh, compare to the existing pipeline? Um, I don't actually have numbers on that now. I'm sorry, I, I, I can follow up and, and get numbers, uh, so I can meet you and get your contact, so I can share that with you. Hello. Uh, uh, can I have access uh, through C Sharp code to dynamical batching system? Can I control it with uh, 
this pipeline, scriptable pipeline of uh, control over our batching system. The batching, no, um, so the batching, uh, it happens on C++, so it's not on C sharp side. Um, you just, you, you can control in the pipeline some uh, sorting options that affects the batching, but uh, it's not exposed. I have one question. Is there's a chance to uh, find somewhere those, those demo? Uh, or is there yeah. any place? <laughs> so, so they're boat demo. Yeah, um, exactly. We, we plan to release it uh, when we release 18.2. Ah, okay. Because it, it just needs some cleanup. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought I have a question. Um, I saw a few um, post-processing uh, features on your demo. So, how good is the lightweight rendering pipeline um, suited for that? Um, yeah. So, post is always going to be heavy on mobile, and in, in the demo, it is quite a large chunk of the rendering time. Um, but we are looking into doing customized post for lightweight and HD render pipeline because obviously they're worlds apart in the quality. So we need to make sure that we kind of aim the post at what the platform is going to be. So. Thanks. All right. So that's it then. Yeah, cool. thank, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Yeah.